Welcome to Aftermath's Gold Challenge Mode Guide. I'm Marza, and this is Scarlet Monastery. Scarlet Monastery is one of the most difficult challenge modes that you can do. For this first pull, you want to target this pile of corpses. It will keep spawning zombies. And you want to pre-pop before you pull on this one, because your DPS is really going to matter. Um, once the pile of corpses goes down, there's a Scarlet Flamethrower, which you can see is already dead, and two Scarlet Centurions. Usually those three will be fairly equal in life, and you'll want to switch between them and kind of cleave them down. As we kill this group, we're going to move on. The two headstones in this graveyard here, you want to run fairly close to the edge of them in a straight line out, like I just did. Otherwise, you will aggro the group in the middle of the graveyard, and if you go too far the other way, you will aggro the group on the wall. Here we pull both packs of groups onto the middle with the boss, and I'm channeling a snare and stun. You don't want to put very much damage into them, um, preferably none, until after the tank is away. We are trying to keep the boss on top of them long enough for the warlock to do some AE, he'll gain some damage out of it. You can also continue to tank the boss near them if you need more AE, like right there. I could keep him fairly close there and keep blood boiling them if I chose to, but that wasn't part of our strategy. So the empowered zombies that he summons. If you have a DK in your group, they can control undead them to get a little bit of extra damage and to get a little relief for your tank and healer because they hit fairly hard. If you don't have one, that's fine. Just off tank them the whole fight. You will probably get two. You also want to interrupt the um, the spirit gales that he casts, if at all possible. They put a, a circle underneath the tank that does a fairly nasty magic dot if you continue to stand in it. It leaves a debuff, so it's really easy to see when you're standing in it. And if you have several melee, then they'll be able to keep it interrupted and they'll want to so that you're not moving the boss around too much. You can see here the second zombie spawns and we're just off tanking it for the rest of the fight. This first fight is one where you're going to use Bloodlust and any cooldowns, any major cooldowns you have, um, DPS-wise, such as Doom Guards or any 5 plus minute cooldowns, you will want to use them here and again on the last boss. I should note Although you are using cooldowns, you cannot use a DPS potion here, you will be using an invisibility potion. There are actually several ways to proceed through this instance with different potion usage. For this pull, to get the correct amount of mobs in the instance, we opt to pull these two yellow mobs. If that patrol were not there, we would simply kill these two yellow mobs before we pulled it. Since it was, we pulled all of it together, and I'm using Icebound Fortitude and all of my other cooldowns as well as stunning these mobs to prevent them from casting, our druid have gone tree form as well. This is possibly the heaviest damage pack you'll find in any challenge mode. As the tank, I try to target the zealot and get his heals. He doesn't do a lot of damage, but the heals will be nasty. All the DPS should be focusing the scarlet purifiers. The purifiers will cast cleansing flame or purifying flame, and it's a single target nuke on your tank for about 160,000 damage and there are two of them in this pack. They also do Flame Strike that does significant AE damage on the floor. The Judicators that we pulled, the two yellow mobs, do a stun, so ideally we don't pull them with that pack, but if the timing lines up that way, you don't really want to fiddle around with it. You just want to pull it all and hope that you can get it. Here we clump up by the window and use an 18 second invisibility potion with a roar. You can also use 15 second invisibility potions with a aspect of the pack. Um, or you could probably use 18 with any kind of movement speed increase. If you don't have a movement speed increase, you may need to kill the next pack of three mobs before you use a potion, in which case you have plenty of time to make it. So here, we don't want to aggro any of these other mobs, so I'm waiting for the boss to patrol away. We're going to fight him in this fountain. As you can see, there are mobs on the left and the right. We don't have a whole lot of room to fight him on. The range needs to be disciplined and make sure that they are never running out of that Firestorm kick and into mobs. They have to run towards me. And I'm facing him towards the waterfall so that I can just run away from the Blazing Fists without it hitting anybody else. The Blazing Fists do a lot of damage. Your tank cannot just stand in them on challenge mode. The Firestorm kick does not do 
a terrible amount of damage early on, but as he gains stacks of his buff that causes him to do more fire damage, it will start to do a lot. Um, it will pretty much get into two-shot range by the end of the fight. People need to be very quick reacting to it. Also, around 40% or so, or 50%, he will get another buff, Scorched Earth right there, where he starts dropping patches of fire everywhere that he walks. You can see there's a patch where he was just standing. Try to keep him in the same patch all the time, so that the melee don't have to worry about avoiding it. And it should never be a factor, nobody should ever stop that. So after this boss dies, you're going to see that we move between the two groups of adds that he starts with, so that we don't aggro either of them. You'll see two benches on the edge of this fountain. You want to align yourself directly in the middle of them, so that you are walking down the middle of this tile right here. If you go any farther to the left or right, you will aggro more. We single pull, well, double pull, these two solo purifiers while our healer is drinking because he wasted a lot of mana on that boss. It does a ton of damage. And all of the pulls in this cathedral you have to kill. They aggro with the last boss. And they are all fairly damaging as well. The idea with this next pull is to pull this group and LOS it behind the pillar. Unfortunately, not everybody else was behind the pillar with me, so you can see that it goes a little haywire. Um, we managed to pull this out, but... Ideally, you get them tightly clumped on the pillar, you stun them, and you burn them down. As always, the purifiers are DPS targets, and the zealots are tank interrupt targets because of the heal. healer's pretty much um again, so we're pulling purifiers. We tend to let the healer mana dictate what we pull in this uh, particular room. If your healer has a lot of mana and you have cooldowns, it would also have been fine to pull the second large pack on the left. But instead he was low on mana, so we pulled the purifiers, and then we pulled this AE group around the corner. This Scarlet Zealot that I'm targeting is the same as all the rest. It has a lot of health and it heals. The Scarlet Initiates have much less health, but they also heal, so you want to get this whole group stunned and AE down as quickly as possible. This next pull is much like before, where we're trying to LOS it around the pillar. I'm using Army of Dead to mitigate um, some of the damage that these mobs will do. Again, the LOS doesn't quite go as planned as people go to different pillars. But with the army there, it doesn't really matter. They're clumped enough, and they're not really hurting anybody. You also can see that we got one of the patrolling mobs, the Judicator. This room has mobs that patrol from the far southeast section, or the left, as you're looking in towards the boss. They spawn... Uh, probably every 30 or 40 seconds, and they walk out and they despawn, and it will just keep respawning, Adjudicator. They do count towards your mob kill limit, so it can be somewhat random how many mobs you need at the end here. We opt to pull the boss and get these three with it. We focus down these two Judicators because they'll stun the tank, um, and we've CC'd the healer over there, the Zealot. If you need another mob, you can just pull that Zealot. I still recommend CCing it until you've killed the Judicators, because you don't want to deal with interrupting heals as well as DPSing. But in this case, we have the exact amount of mobs we need, so we just left him over there for the rest of the fight. This first boss doesn't really do anything. The commander, he does this bouncing around thing. We don't typically have a melee heavy group. If you do, you'll want to clump up on top of him so that he's not moving around so much. And we do do that at the end of this video, but you can see that we weren't right here. We 
make sure to resheep before this guy dies so that it will not come out and start beating on people while you're slept. So white main is slightly different from on the heroic mode. You're still going to want someone designated to interrupt the mass resurrection, which in this case is me, but immediately after she casts Dominate Mine, one and a half second cast, all of your DPS who can focus on it need to focus on interrupting that. I believe it can be slowed with um, Curse of Tongues and Mind Numbing Poison and such, but it is a very fast cast, and if it successfully goes off, someone in your party will be mind controlled for 30 seconds, which is far too much lost damage for you to, uh, to realistically get a gold your first time out. So right here after the sleep breaks, we just reapply CC, make sure to interrupt the mass res again, and you burn down Inquisitor White Mane, interrupting um, Dominate Mine, and then you hop on the commander and hopefully you have enough time left to get it. You need about four minutes to get a gold from the time you engage this boss. So good luck. Hope you found this guide helpful, so subscribe, check out our website, and visit me on Twitch. Thanks.